This episode of Midco Sports Magazine is presented by Shields and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Hello again, welcome to Midco Sports Magazine. It is November, getting into basketball season, and we've got two great hoops stories this month, including this one. Mike Dom has become a hoop hero at South Dakota State, but he had a hero growing up as well. David Brown explains how Dom's hero not only told him to clean up the glass, but also to clean up his room. Kimball, Nebraska lies on the far western edge of the state. Mainly a farming community, it's known as the high point of Nebraska, but one of its homegrown athletes is challenging that moniker. Mike Dom is already a high point at six foot nine, but he started from the ground up. From the time that he was a little boy, we were always active. I always had different games going on, different challenges. We challenged each other with everything we did. The kids used to race each other to the car to see who could get to the car first. Everything I did was competitive between that and just you know going to bed first, things just like the most random games I'd make out of everything. But one game in particular appealed to Mike the most. It's the one his mom played at the University of Wyoming and was more than happy to teach her son. My claim to fame with Mike is his shot. I taught him how to shoot. When he was little, we used to literally lay on the on the floor teaching him the flick and it's and it's all wrist it's not your elbow it's all wrist and it's getting backspin on the ball and the more backspin you can get the softer that ball is going to be around the rim we had this game where we laid on the bed and you had to flick it to your partner flip over each other and then she'd do the same flick it and flip over and then we just kept going back and forth and we had so many fun shooting games we just did in the house teaching is one thing but competition is a whole nother ball game you see, Michelle Dom, then Michelle Hoppus, wasn't just some player at Wyoming. She left the school as their all-time leading scorer and rebounder. It was when we were playing one-on-one -on -one and she was just beating the crap out of me. I'd take it to him every time. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I, would, I would get heated, kick the ball when I was done because I was like, first off, it's letting a girl beat me. Second off is my mom. And I'm just like, well, one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat her and then, and then we'll see who's the top dog in the house. As Mike grew, so did his love for basketball. And Michelle became more than just a teacher and one-on-one -on -one partner. She became the head coach of Mike's youth team when he was in third grade. For some reason, that group of boys always accepted me. Even though I was a woman, I think it was because I was really mean. I was harder on Mike than any of the other boys. I was hard on the boys. I was, they were a really tough group. I think she knew she could be tough on me, though. But, you know, it's nice because she knows what it takes to, to get to the next level. In addition to coaching, Michelle put Mike through individual drills practically every day in the Kimball High School gym. But it wasn't until Mike was 12 years old that Michelle saw something bigger in his future. I will never forget working out with him, and he was just, he was on fire. I think he probably hit 60 shots in a row. I remember crying. I just stopped him and said, you have no idea what you could do. I honestly feel at this moment in time, you could carry on your career and play Division I basketball. Michelle's formal coaching stopped when Mike entered high school, but her presence in his basketball life only grew. She would drive him more than 100 miles each way to his AAU team in Fort Collins, Colorado, and the individual sessions would continue throughout the year, whether Mike was playing AAU or for Kimball High. You have to keep working at it. You can't ever rest on your laurels, because I said there's always going to be somebody out there that's better. We would go and work out almost every single night, um, just us two. And she always had new drills that she was getting like from my AAU coach or that she'd create herself. And uh, she was always pushing me in different ways. I didn't think I could be pushed. By his senior year, Mike had more than 10 Division I offers, including one from his mom and dad's alma mater. I always believed he needed to set his own path. It, it didn't matter that both Mitch and I had gone there. I really firmly believed that he needed to make those decisions on his own. And that, and that was part of his growing up. I never actually took a trip to Wyoming and when I came up here the players here were great the coaches were phenomenal it was just a, a better atmosphere for me here after redshirting his true freshman season Mike finally got a chance to hit the court at SDSU in the fall of 2015 where he led the Jackson scoring and rebounding while starting only two of 34 games 
I was trying to do whatever Coach Nagy said. I was trying to keep a level head through the whole thing. And, uh, you know, I was really taking criticism from seniors, and I just wanted to feel out how everyone was going to be. And, and uh, I was just trying to play as hard as I can, make the most of my minutes when I got in there, and uh, it worked out for me. After leading the Jacks to another NCAA tournament berth, the future for Mike looked brighter than ever until Scott Nagy, the man who led him to SDSU, was led somewhere else. It was really difficult because it's like the coach that brought you to this school, made you love this school, been with through a year, um, and I was kind of a blind side. I think there was a moment where you feel kind of betrayed, you know, by that. But at the same point, we are a pretty glass half full type of family and you take it and you go, there's a reason. There's got to be a reason for it. Rumors not only swirled about who SDSU's next head coach would be, but if Mike would even be around to see him. But when the Jacks hired former Iowa State assistant TJ Otzelberger, the decision on whether to stay or transfer was clear. I knew that the moment we brought him in and he, uh, and he talked with us, I was like, if this guy's our head coach, then, then we're going to be just fine. I think it's a blessing in disguise. I think it's going to be a really good fit for Mike and, and the entire team. I have such a great team chemistry here and the fans are so great here and we have such a camaraderie in this community that I just felt like uh, there was no way I could leave. Now in his sophomore season the question is how can Mike follow up such a remarkable start to his career? The answer goes all the way back to the seventh grade when Mike finally conquered his basketball hero. We were playing in a, the high school gym and and I was just like all right let's just play one-on-one -on -one. like we haven't played in a while so we played one-on-one -on -one. I finally beat her and I was like Yes, I was so excited. And I think she was she was really upset. Like she was actually mad. But then I told him that you're going to keep growing. You're going to keep getting better. And when you can beat me, legit, it's going to mean that much more to you. So no, I'm not going to just let you win. I'm never the best. Like I'm never I'm never going to be on top. Like for me, I'm always I'm always at the bottom. I always have stuff to work on. So I think that just keeps driving and motivating me to just keep getting better every day. And joined now by David Brown. Going to be so fun to see how Mike does in his sophomore season. And he had the, the basketball influence at home, but he had some football influence at home as well, didn't he? Yeah, you saw his mom was obviously a college hoop star at Wyoming. His dad also went to Wyoming, was a tight end in Laramie. Had a little run in the NFL in the late 1980s. So Mike played football growing up. His parents said he was basically the quarterback of his Pop Warner team. But as he started growing, his parents kind of decided basketball would probably be the better option. Not a lot of 6'9 quarterbacks in the NFL, Tom. Good call. Thanks a lot, David Brown. Our thanks to Mike Dom and Carlin Dupree and DJ Skelton. You can find this episode and all the episodes of Midco Sports Magazine on YouTube. This has been Midco Sports Magazine, presented by Shields and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine.